Hey everybody, um, I want to do a quick video about um, four wing threes and I thought a great film to show uh, a four wing three character, a sexual four wing three character, is in the film Whiplash from 2014 and it's been a few years since I've seen it but I remember when I did see it I enjoyed watching it and it's one of the few films that really addresses the dedication and the hard work and the actual drive that goes into wanting to be a great artist. Most of the time when you see films about great artists, they're either presented as crazy or they're presented on a pedestal. It's sort of like a them versus us, we'll never understand them, like they're a different breed, um, or that they're just so talented and just came naturally to them. But this film, addresses is one of the few films I've seen where it is told from the point of view of the artist versus the other way around like I just described so Andy is um, a drummer and he wants to be in um, this jazz ensemble and there's a very um, intense instructor um, his name's Fletcher and Andy is very much determined to be great he's comparing comparing himself to Charlie Parker he's, he his goal is to be one of the greatest drummers ever he wants to uh, be remembered after he's dead and um, he's gonna do whatever it takes to to achieve this and so definitely I'm seeing the the three wing here the this notion of you know comp competitiveness and pushing past you know others to get what he wants but also he's very withdrawn so there's a four He's, he's a four wing three rather than a three wing four because he, I'm gonna link to a scene where you see him at a dinner table and you see how he doesn't feel like he fits in. And the, the scene is, is told from his perspective. I mean, it's really uh, his point of view. So we feel, we can feel this tension at the dinner table where he doesn't feel he fits in. And you can see him withdrawing. And I think this is one of the best scenes in the film. And it's a very important scene because he, uh, he sort of gets overshadowed by his, his, the people at the table, the younger guys, the football players, and he's kind of dismissed. They're like, oh, and Andy, and you're drumming. And, you know, they're not necessarily doing it to be malicious. It's just that they don't understand it. And so he doesn't feel appreciated or understood by his, his peers and, his, you know, his family members. So he's kind of just, you know, it's not that he's being a jerk, because he's not, but he's just, you can see him, he's just, very well acted you can see the tension on his face and they get into a bit of a, a discussion and argument and um, he kind of pokes fun at, of the football players and the, um, the his father Paul Reiser doesn't really he, he plays a character very well but he's kind of smarmy he doesn't really support his son on an, an artistic level I mean he supports him but not in that deep understanding artistic way that only artists and people of creative ability really understand. Um, so, so at the table he speaks about, I'd rather be remembered after I'm dead. I'd rather, like, we're all sitting here talking about Charlie Parker. I'd rather people talk about me when I'm long dead. And, and then one of the, they say, do you have any friends, Andy? He says, no, I, I don't see any use for them. So you see the withdrawn aspect. You see that this character is, it doesn't feel like he connects with people and he doesn't have he says he doesn't have friends because he is so driven he feels they'll get in the way of his goals um, I think if this if he were a three wing four it'd be very different I think he'd be much more people dependent um, and because threes tend to find a way to not be overshadowed it doesn't mean um, they they might not feel overshadowed from time to time I'm I'm um, but generally, my experience, I notice that threes will find a way to occupy that attention and bring it back onto them, such as at the dinner table, he would have done that, but he doesn't do that. You see him withdraw, and, um, and, and, and rightly so. I mean, I totally empathize with this character. I mean, I know what he feels in terms of just not feeling understood, and you want to draw, you have this drive, and you want to achieve... Uh, this level of standard in your artwork but the culture doesn't value it so much or your family doesn't value it and um, so as I said um, this is one of the few films that actually tells it from the point of view of the artist the, de the dedication that goes into it and it's not in that sense of wow let's make him crazy or let's put him on a pedestal it's the, 
there's a great line and there's a great exchange with the instructor. Fletcher mentions that one of the um, students in the in his ensemble left, and he says he left and he went to medical school. And he goes, I guess he got discouraged. Now, with a statement like that, most people wouldn't understand why would going to medical school mean someone is discouraged, right? That's a noble pursuit. Well, yes, it is, but from the point of view of the artist, artists pursue, view that as um, kind of a lay person's pursuit. Like if you have the opportunity to be the next Beethoven or just, you know, um, a family practitioner, most, you know, they're going to choose going to be, be Beethoven. You know, they, they want to be remembered and talked about. And um, being a practitioner, there's nothing wrong with that, certainly, and it's a noble pursuit, but not from the point of view of an artistic person. That's not what they want. So that's why sometimes you'll find people who are in the arts. Um, it's not uncommon to find people in the arts who actually do have kind of low-level jobs. They, they don't work high career jobs because they want to devote their time to their art. They, they don't see that the job is, the, to them, job, a job is just a means to an end to support them so they can do their art. Um, the career, they, they, they don't view it that way because, um, and then and I think this film with that line especially just, just shows that, um, that perspective of, um, of the artist and it was a nice contrast. And uh, I did another video on uh, a different film, Interiors, Woody Allen's Interiors from 1978 and I talk about two characters, one who's a four wing five and one's a five wing four. And if you want to check that one out, um, it can just offer a contrast. And I think I'll do this every so often. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about a film that where I think a certain character is a um, an enneagram type, because it, I know it helps when you can kind of have an image in your mind of of what someone is. And again, they're just characters, so it's just my opinion. But um, I very much see a four wing three in Andy. Um, in the film Whiplash. So um, that's about all I have for right now. Uh, I would definitely check that out. As I said, check out that dinner scene. I'm going to link to this at the bottom of the video. And I'm going to have some more stuff pretty soon. Um, I've, just, um, I've just been having to sort through things and get some stuff done. But um, that's all I think I have for right now. Um, oh, let me show you one thing right now. Hold on. This, this is Thor, and Thor, isn't he cute? He looks like a little lion. He got shaved yesterday. And I, I uploaded a recent video of, uh, well, it's not a recent video, but I recently uploaded a video from 2008 where my cats, some of them are no longer with me, but um, are much younger, and Thor is in that video, and now here he is. He was just getting really ratty, so um, he just... He's a, he's a medium hair, so he doesn't always um, groom as he should as now he's getting older. So we uh, got, he's, he's now shaved, and he's got the little, little tail and the little boots, so he looks like a little lion. Anyway, just wanted to share, share that, and I will be in touch. Hope you have a pleasant rest of your day. Thank you for listening.